So back in August, Will Smith posted this video to his Instagram page. I'm not sure what the effect is called, but it's some sort of freeze frame 3D motion effect of some kind. And you've probably seen an effect similar to this before, but it might've been using like a stationary camera and just some simple masking. This one adds a level of complexity because it involves some camera movement. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to recreate that effect right after this. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Hafey with Hafey Digital here. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, as you should, you may have seen that I've already attempted to recreate this effect before with the help of my son, Bryce. Now, I thought it turned out pretty good, but it turns out that I just got a little lucky because when I tried to replicate the same effect with some different footage, it totally didn't work and I was pulling my hair out and I couldn't figure out why. But I figured it out and I've got all the steps in place and in order, ready to share with all your lovely faces. Now, I should explain before we go any further that this is an after effects tutorial and I am not an After Effects aficionado by any means. I'm pretty proficient with Premiere Pro, but After Effects is more of a second language to me. So while I'm going through this, if you see me doing something that I could be doing a lot faster, please avoid screaming at your screen and just leave me a comment. Let me know what I can do to improve my workflow. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about what you will need to get started with creating this effect. First off, you're obviously going to need a camera. Really a camera of any kind will work. One with a wider lens though, is going to work a lot better and I'll explain why here shortly. Also, you're going to need some kind of stabilizer or gimbal or some way to stabilize your footage. Maybe you have someone pulling you in an office chair or something like that, but some kind of stabilization device. And also you would need After Effects. Now I'm sure there are other programs out there that will allow you to achieve this effect. I don't know them, I don't use them, so sorry if you don't have After Effects. Moving on, let's talk about camera settings. Now there really aren't any special camera settings you need to know about in order to do the effect. Uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll tell you about the settings that I use and why I use them. First off, let's talk about resolution. I shot all my footage in 4K, and that's really just because I like the way that 4K looks. It's a lot sharper, but also it has a secondary benefit in that if I wanted to edit it together in a 1080p timeline, I can do some things like some post movement and zoom and pans and things like that. As far as frame rate goes, I shot mine in 24 frames per second. You can shoot in a higher frame rate if you wanted to do any slow motion or anything like that. For my aperture, I had it set at f2.8. That's really just because of the lighting situation. Also, I like a shallow depth of field. You can change that up based on your lighting situation or artistic preference. And for my shutter speed, I set it to 1 50th of a second just to go along with the 180 degree rule. Now you may wanna consider bumping up your shutter speed if you foresee your subject having a lot of movement. And the reason for that is a slower shutter speed is gonna give you some of that natural looking motion blur, which looks great. But when it comes time to mask the subject out, which we will be doing some masking in this tutorial, it can be hard to mask that motion blur. So if your subject's gonna be moving around a whole lot, there's gonna be a lot of fast motion, you may wanna consider bumping up that shutter speed to reduce some of that motion blur, making your masking job easier. So that does it for camera settings. Let's move on to filming and framing. First things first, you wanna make sure that your subject is moving either towards you or laterally in front of you. If your subject is moving away from you or if you're moving towards the subject with your camera, you're gonna create a whole new complex masking situation that you don't want. Now for best results, for the portions of the clip where you want to apply the effect, it's best to have the subject's full body in frame from head to toe. And this is why I suggest using a wider angle lens. If you're using a tighter focal length, then your subject is going to take up more of the frame and there's not gonna be as much breathing room for the effect to take place. Place. And finally, you want to instruct your subject to move around a little bit, have them move kind of side to side as they're walking towards you. They can maybe even throw in a, a little jump or something like that. What you don't want is the subject walking directly towards the camera with just a straight line because you could technically do the effect with that type of movement, but it's just not going to look nearly as interesting. All right, and with that, it's time to get the footage into After Effects. Let's go. All right, so here we are in After Effects and I've already gone ahead and imported the footage that I want to use and I've trimmed it to just the portion of the clip that uh, I want to use for the effect. This is a 4K clip, so it's going to scrub through kind of slow, especially in After Effects, 
bear with me there. But this is kind of what that looks like. So what I want to do is come over here, grab the clip and drag it onto the new composition icon there. This will create a new composition that matches the settings of the footage itself. So 4K at 24 frames a second. And the first thing I want to do is scrub through the footage to find the locations where I want the effect to take place. Now, when I was filming my wife, I directed her to kind of walk to certain locations, stop, do a quick pose, move over to the next location, do the same thing again. And this is actually why I went with a shutter speed of 1 50th as opposed to bumping up my shutter speed because she, when she walks to those locations and stops, I'm not having to worry about any motion blur because there's no motion in the scene. Plus, it's going to make it easier for me to pick the points where I want the effect to take place. So I'm going to scrub through here. I think the first point was right about where she settles in fierce right there. So what I want to do here with the cursor on the position where I want the first effect to take place, I'm going to hit the asterisk key on the number pad. And that's just going to create a marker there so I know exactly where it is. If you don't have a number pad, uh, what you can do is go up to, I believe it's layer markers, add marker, and that'll put a marker right there on the clip for you. And I'm going to repeat this two more times. Let's go over here about right there, add another marker. And finally, we'll go, let's see, I think there was one about right here. We'll do like right there. And one last marker. Perfect. Next thing we need to do is click on the clip and we're going to hit Control or Command C. And then we're going to hit Control or Command V once for each marker. So basically, I want to duplicate this clip three times. Then I'm going to bring the cursor back to the first marker point here. And I'm going to go down to this first duplicated clip. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to pre-compose. I'm going to give it a name. In this case, I'll call it marker one. And we're just going to refer to this pre-comp as marker one going forward. And we'll do the same for the other two, marker two, marker three, just to make things easier. Hit OK. Now I want to make sure that the cursor stays on that marker point. I'm going to double click on this pre-comp now. And it's going to open that pre-comp there for me. Then what I want to do is select the track there, go into layer, time, and freeze frame. And what this is going to do is basically just freeze that one singular frame because that's all we need out of this is just that one frame. We don't want it. We don't want it playing back just one single frame. Then I'm going to grab my pen tool. And for right now, I'm just going to make a very rough mask around my wife here. At this point, we don't need to worry about being super precise with the mask. We will do that later. Basically, we just want to ensure that the effect is going to work properly, which is why we're just kind of rushing through it here in the beginning. All right, so now we've got our mask. What we want to do now is go back to the original composition here, and then you just need to duplicate that process two more times, once for each of the duplicated clips. Now, once you've got all your duplicated clips pre-comped and masked out, what you can do is go back to the original composition and delete those three pre-compositions, marker one, marker two, marker three, until you're back to just the original clip there. Next thing you want to do is you want to go over to your tracker window. If you don't see your tracker window, just go up to window and select tracker right there. And with the clip, the original clip selected, go ahead and click track camera. Now, what this is going to do is basically analyze the entire clip in 3D space. So it's going to go through, analyze the clip and put a bunch of little tracking points in there that basically makes a 3D model of the entire clip with the camera movement and everything. And depending on the speed of your computer and the length of the clip, this can take a few minutes. Looks like it's going to take about uh, five minutes for me. So I'm going to go take a little break. And we're back. The analysis is done. And we know that because we see all these little tracking points throughout the clip here. And if we mouse over the clip, we get all these little planes that we can choose from. And those will come in handy here shortly. What we want to do now is go up to the effect controls panel under the 3D camera tracker and click create camera. And that's going to add the 3D camera uh, right there in the timeline. You won't really need to do anything with that, but that does need to be there. Now let's bring the cursor back to the first uh, marker here. Now we know this is where the first point of the effect is going to take place. And again, we want to go up there to the effect controls panel, select that 3D camera tracker so that you start to see all these tracking points. 
And then what you wanna do is look for a plane that's roughly in the same area of the scene as your subject here, at least laterally. It doesn't necessarily be, need to be right here by your feet, but it's usually easiest I find to look for one on the ground. And this one here seems to be about where I want it to be, so I'm going to click on that. Then I'm going to right click and go to create null. Okay, and you'll notice nothing happened and that's fine, that's exactly what you want. But this null basically is going to allow us to track one of the freeze frames into the scene and have it kind of lock in on that location. Now that we've got our track null in place, let's expand this a little bit. I'm gonna go back to the project panel here and I'm gonna bring in marker number one and I'm just gonna drag it right onto the composition monitor here. Now when I do that, the tracking points go away, but you'll notice that nothing else changes. And there's a good reason for that. It's because the marker one is the same, it's masked from the same clip that's on the screen there. So if we mouse around a little bit, you'll see that the mask is there in fact, but it's not, it's not going anywhere. It's just staying in the same spot in the frame because we haven't done what we need to do yet. So let's bring the cursor back to that first marker point. And what I wanna do here is I wanna click this little box underneath the 3D layer icon. And when I do that, you'll see something interesting happen here. That's right, marker one has sort of arbitrarily moved to this strange location. So what we need to do now is go down and select the track null. And if you hit the P button on your keyboard, it's going to open the position properties. We're gonna click on that, hit Command or Control C, and then click on your marker layer and hit Command or Control V. And that's basically going to lock it into the same position that we set for that track null. Now what we need to do is go in and use our transform properties, including scale, position, and our XYZ rotation to get it to match as closely as possible to the original clip here. So this can take some time and some tweaking, but just be patient with it and go through and, and, and get it done here. I'm gonna collapse the track null. I'm gonna open marker one, go into the transform properties here. First thing I wanna do is scale this up. If you hold the shift key, it'll do it in the same proportions there. I'm gonna bring it to the center. I can already see just based on kind of how it's positioned that I need to adjust some of the X, Y, Z rotation. Let's touch the Y rotation there. Looks pretty good. Get into place. You can kind of use these little guides there. All right, and then if you turn the marker one off and on, you can see that it's pretty good. Not exact, but we can tweak that a little bit here. All right, so this isn't perfect, but it's pretty close and it's definitely close enough to pull off the effect. So what I wanna do now that I've got everything positioned where I want, I'm going to make sure that marker one is selected there. I'm gonna hit command or control plus shift plus D. And what that's going to do is split the clip there. You can also go up to, I believe, layer, nope, composition, nope, edit. Edit, split layer. And you do that, and then you wanna delete the portion of the clip after the marker. Now, if we scroll back a little bit and play back, this is what it's going to look like. Pretty cool, huh? Now remember, the mask isn't gonna look perfect yet. We can go back in later and refine that a little bit. So it's gonna look like it has some sharp edges and things like that. But at least you can see now that the effect is working. And now all we need to do is repeat these last few steps for the remaining two markers and uh, we'll be on our way. So let's go to marker two here. So we'll put the cursor on the second marker there, select the, go up to our effect controls panel. Make sure we have the 3D camera tracker like selected. this one here. So I'm and gonna click drag marker two. Again, we're gonna right click to, to make this a 3D object. object. So we're going to there. click this check now we have box a new track. here. All right, we've repeated the process for all three marker clips. Now, if we go back home and play it through, this is what it'll look like. And we're most of the way home. All that's left to do now is to go into each of the markers 
and let's see let's go into the first one here and we just need to touch up our mask so you can go in here and any changes that you make on this mask here will be reflected in the final composition granted it is a little time consuming uh, but just be patient with it take some time really get those masks looking good and uh, the effect will be seamless. You can throw on a color grade if you feel so inclined, and as long as you've gone through and cleaned up your masks, this is what your final effect will look like. And there you go, that is how you do the freeze frame 3D motion tracking effect. Like, I guess that's what I'll call it because I don't. I really don't know what else to call it. I want to give a big shout out to Cinecom, Justin Odisho, and Happy Fox Productions. They all had tutorials on their YouTube channels, which kind of guided me along my way as I was trying to figure out exactly how to do that tutorial. So thank you to you guys. And thank you to you for watching this. I hope you got some value out of this. Don't ask me any questions about this because I may not be able to answer it. Just kidding. Feel free to leave any questions below and I'll do my best to respond to them. And if you end up making this effect for yourself, I would love to see it. Be sure to post it to Instagram or Twitter and tag me at Ryan Hafey. That'll do it for this long overdue video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.